Hey, my name is Jovan and I'm a 3D layout artist working in the animation industry. This is part one in my three part series on how to get the most out of your cameras in Blender from my experience. This part is about the basics of cameras and getting to know the camera in Blender. Part two is about using constraints to your advantage. And part three is about making a control rig for your camera. If you're starting as a complete beginner or you've been using the software for a while, I hope you'll be able to find some tips and tricks in here that could be helpful to improve your 3D cinematography skills. So when making 3D cameras, your goal per project may differ. But in general, when using cameras in 3D, the main goal is usually to make the camera seem as grounded in reality as possible. Obviously, this isn't always the case, but it's a decent rule of thumb to use. Most audiences won't notice 99% of the things that you do to make your shot look great, but they notice that 1% that might look a little bit less polished, a little bit janky, and they'll often use that as a critique for the entire project, which is not what you want. A big reason for why we want to make the camera based on reality is because you can kind of see a camera as an extension of your own eye. We see the world from a certain way in a pretty grounded sense. So if you're able to make a camera match how the human eye sees, it's going to make your scene seem a lot more comforting and like open and just relaxing. It will essentially make the viewer not think about the fact that there's a 3D camera that's been made here. They'll just think, oh, it's just a part of the story. When you're filming in real life, you usually can't just make the camera do outlandish, crazy moves all over the place. So in 3D, it's usually a good rule of thumb to kind of try and follow the same rule. Obviously, you can break these for certain big like cinematic chase sequences or whatever, but it's a good rule of thumb to stick by. So when basing your camera off reality, a good place to start is often with determining a lens list. A lot of studios will have a set number of focal lengths based off real life cinema cameras. This is because there's a good amount of reference data to use. For example, so for example, with a 50 mil in your shot, you can compare that to a 50 mil in real life and kind of see how the framing and composition matches up and you can see if your camera actually is emulating that real life camera. Also, because the human eye is very used to seeing these focal lengths, it won't seem weird or out of place when using them. A good example of this is using a set of prime lenses to base your kit off. If you start using like super short or super long lenses, like a 500 mil or a five millimeter, it might look interesting artistically, but you can almost guarantee that the audience will notice that and it might take them out of the story that you're trying to tell. Adjusting the focal length in Blender is super easy. All you have to do is create a camera and select it, go to the camera attributes on the right hand side and adjust the focal length button here. It's as easy as that. Below this, you'll see a clip start and end feature. This can be helpful if you're super far away or super close to an object and it's clipping. Just adjust these values until it actually looks right in your viewport. Be careful not to make them too extreme though at the start of your project because it can really bog down and slow your scene quite a bit. The next feature down is depth of field, which if you're trying to make a realistic camera is a must have. Playing with the aperture settings can help make your camera even more realistic. If you want an easy way to set focus, you can just use the picker tool next to focus on object. You can just select any object with this and it will set the focus to that. But a better way is to scroll down to viewport display, turn on limits, and then use the new crosshatch tool that you'll see attached to your camera and use this to drag your focus around. This will give you a lot more control over your camera's focus. You can also animate this number as you'll see the focus distance value change. You can just click on that little keyframe button there. If there's a real life camera look that you want to emulate, like certain cinema cameras or a black magic, like I'm shooting on a black magic now, I might want to emulate that in one of my shots. Click on the camera presets tool to choose between a wide range of preset cameras. This will change the sensor width and height, which can give you more real to life camera looks as opposed to the default settings. Under this, you'll see something saying safe areas. And then if you drop down viewport display, you see something saying composition guides. These will both help you immensely with framing your camera in Blender. A fun bonus but essential tip is to have the graph editor readily available or preferably open when working with your cameras. This is extremely helpful as for one, you can actually see what's going on with your camera curves because just like in animation, the curves control everything. But also when you're working in a shot to shot basis, it's great to be able to see in a larger, more blown out sense rather than just looking in the timeline where your keyframes are actually stored and what the curves look like. So for example, if you're trying to convey continuous motion between shots, you'd want to use linear keys that don't ease in or ease out at the end of your shot because this means that the move's coming to a stop only to be then picked up again in the next shot. Whereas with a linear curve that finishes in one shot and continues in the next, you can have this flowing continuous camera motion. Just be aware of the speed of the camera curve when you're doing this because you don't want it to seem too out of sync. Otherwise the pacing can feel a bit off and jumpy. Similarly, when using spline curves, you wanna make sure your tangents are weighted correctly for the kind of shot or emotion that you wanna be portraying with your camera. If you wanna ease something out slowly or have the camera come to a much slower, calm stop, you can extend one of the handles of the tangents to make the curve a lot smoother and have it kind of ease in or ease out, whatever you wanna call it, into that stopped finish position, which will give a much more smooth, peaceful and calm end to the camera move. And that's it. As you can see, cameras are pretty easy to get to know in Blender. 
From here, check out part two in my tutorial series, which will teach you how to make more intricate specific moves by using the attributes controls in Blender. Once you finish that, follow on to part three to see how to create a custom control rig for your camera. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below. If you like what you saw and want to see more, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.